So I want to tell you a story. All right? I'll tell you a story about a, a young kid that was very curious, a young person that, when traveling with his mom and dad and sister, would seemingly get lost, right? Wander off to the distant and beyond, which is just really across the street. And so his mom and dad decided, you know what? We're going to let this kid explore a little bit more. We're going to let this kid go to a Montessori school. You know, we're going to let him push the envelope and explore more, ask questions, and sort of enter this world of curiosity of which, of course, you know, you could do no wrong. Why would you get in trouble for asking questions? And so this kid grew up, and, and finally he had to do something with his life. Because, I don't know, he liked going to Benihana's of Tokyo and eating a lot of lobster and steak, so he had to pay for it. So he decided to focus. What? Focus? What are you talking about? Multitask. No, 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 you got to focus. And this whole world started to spin, but he started to lock in. And he decided to play football. He decided to put all of his time and energy into something that he was passionate about and go knock somebody's head off. And I'll get paid while doing it. So there's plenty of lobster to go around. And so this kid decided to play. And then at one point, someone came up and said to him, you know what? Wouldn't you like to travel a little bit? So it piqued his curiosity. He was like, oh, you know what? I'm focused on this game of football. You know, I don't want to get distracted. But you mean you're going to pay for me to go on a plane, to go travel, to go different countries, and eat different food, and meet different people? You know, it's like, a, it's like saying squirrel. And so what did he do? He decided to just jump on a plane and go. He decided to risk it all. Millions of dollars, non-guaranteed money for a dream to see the world. And you know what? He might get hurt while doing it. But he realized that there are millions and millions of people out there that needed to hear the story of others. What better way to inform the world than to just tell it yourself? And that, that kid was me. And so in the same way that I was able to tell that story and change the prompter, oh well. Oh, there you go. In the same way that I was able to tell that story, I was able to teach people about the world. And when I was in the locker room, people asked me questions. And people wanted to learn. And, and it was that moment that I realized that the most important thing that I could have done was take a chance not only myself, but I was taking a chance for other people, because they needed to know as well. And this quote I love uh, by Albert Einstein, not everything that can be counted counts, and not everything that counts can be counted. And regardless of the chance that was taken, it was for the people. And so people started calling me the bow tie guy. They were like, there's this guy, this black guy who plays football, and he wears a bow tie, and he travels all over the world, but he tells these incredible stories. He meets these awesome people. He puts himself out there. And I didn't realize what was actually happening. I didn't realize what was really starting to build. I didn't realize how people's lives were starting to be changed. But we were creating that culture of conversation. We were creating that dynamic of sort of a global approach. But the bow ties, to me, were more important than anything else. The bow ties defined who I was and what I truly believed in. And that was about something that was not me, but something that was greater than myself. And it all started with this guy, Kunta Littlejohn. He's bigger than I am, so you can tell how big he really is. And 
Kota said to me one day, he said, you know, if you gotta be somebody, you gotta rock a bow tie. And I kind of looked at him like he was crazy, like you guys are kind of looking at me. It's like, who in the world wants to wear a bow tie? The only people that wear bow ties are guys like Count Chocula, Pee Wee Herman. You know, it wasn't cool to rock a bow tie, you know, fruit of Islam. I don't know, somebody else, somebody that nobody wants to be. He's like, no, you got to be somebody, got to rock a bow tie. I was like, no, I'm not wearing a bow tie. And one day I went to go visit him. And I was down in Philadelphia. And I saw my friend, I was like, man, you know what? You look like you're losing a little weight. And he wasn't 300 pounds anymore, he was about 120 pounds. And I was like, whoa, you know. What's going on? He said, you know, you see those pills over there. I have to take those because I have cancer. What I didn't realize is that my friend who was 22 years old had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And so I immediately left, went up the turnpike, and I went to go put on a bow tie. I've been rocking one ever since. Just as important as the story of travel is the story of Kunta. And since that time with Kunta, he's gotten better. I've never taken the bow tie off. He's back up to now 350 pounds. I love Krispy Kreme. <laughs> We've started a company called Bowtie Cause. And Bowtie Cause, what I realized was that it wasn't about me in the same way of travel, in the same way of Kunta. It was about something that was greater than ourselves. It was a story that others, just like yourself and everybody else in the audience, could tell about those that they've supported, those that have a voice and those that don't have a voice. And with Bowtie Cause, we've helped other organizations raise over a million dollars. Being in the NFL locker room, you see time and time again different people starting nonprofit organizations, but what you don't see people do is solve the issue of raising money. There's millions and millions of organizations that are out there, but if you whittle it down, it probably only comes down to about 100. I believe in all of your passion, I believe in all of your stories, but what I also realize is there's not a lot of money that's out there. And so instead of starting an organization that goes out and raises funds, we decided to partner with different organizations to help them raise funds and help them truly tell their story because we believe that's the most impactful thing. Working with 100 and different, 159 different organizations and making 194 different designs, we truly believe that it's not necessarily the designs, not necessarily the bow ties, but the 37,000 stories that we've been able to tell. To be able to walk into a room, as my friend did on a New Year's Eve at a party right over there in Adams Morgan, and some young lady walks up to him and says, you know, that's a funny looking bow tie you have on. Suddenly the music stopped, and he said, this bow tie I'm wearing is for the 9-11 Foundation. And my friend passed in the towers. Or another one of my friends that walked into a place and said, oh, that's really cute. What are those little stick figures? Oh, that's the Pablo Foundation. Stories transcend and create that emotional pathway to the brain. You may not remember all the statistics that I've put up on the board. You may not even remember that I've tried to run away a couple different times. You may not remember me being a football player, but you'll remember Kunta's story, and you'll remember my friend's story who was at the bar, and every other nonprofit that we've worked with across the country, from the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation and selling 100 bow ties and one dinner for 40 grand, James Beard Foundation, one bow tie for $15,000. It's not about the money, it's about the power of that story. And so we ask you all outside to color in your passion. And I hope you continue to do so because we want to be able to hear, see, 
and be able to feel that emotional connectivity as we all sit here today at the Social Innovation Summit and realize that, yes, digital is the way the world is moving, but analog is the way we all truly connect. And with Bowtie Cause, that's what we do. We establish a visceral conversation, connection, a certain level with different nonprofits, companies, corporations, but most importantly, people. And we're just getting started. Thank you.